I've been mentioning my overlanding journey over and over again without really specifying where I'm gonna go, how far I'm gonna go and how long I'm gonna go. The reason was just simply I didn't know. It changed so many times but I now finally made a decision and I'm ready to share it with you but I actually want to tell you the whole story about this. So in 2018, I finished my master thesis, I studied geography and I was exhausted. My only goal then was go to travel, finishing the thesis and go to travel. I took all my money. My goal was to travel east as far as I can with my money. My flatmates joined me back then and we had an amazing time traveling east by bus, by train, by shared taxis, hitchhiking and a lot of walking indeed as well. Traveling by public transport was amazing because you get to know so many different people. But also at that time in Central Asia, I met people from different corners of the world, from Asia, from Australia, from Europe, who were like traveling over land with their bicycles, motorcycles, but also with their cars. And when I came back, I immediately started to save that money to one day go again. The pandemic came and I was locked in as everybody else during that time and had a lot of time to dream about different travel routes. And also during that lockdown, I saw a movie, a movie of a guy who was traveling through Africa with his um, bicycle. And I don't know about you, but every time I see one of these travel documentaries, I start to cry, I get super melancholic, I absolutely, everything in myself wants to do this as well. And so it was in this case. And after watching this movie, I was just like, okay, I am going as well. Here I um, want to show you the three main overlanding routes that you can do if you want to cross continents. So when you decide overlanding through Africa, you can decide between the Eastern and the Western route. The Eastern overlanding route through Africa covers a significant distance, starting in Egypt and concluding in South Africa. This route takes you through countries as Sudan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, Malawi, Zambia, and potentially ending in Zimbabwe or South Africa. Along this journey, travelers will encounter diverse landscapes such as the Nile River, the Ethiopian Highlands, the Serengeti Plains and the impressive Victoria Falls. The western overlanding route through the continent encompasses a long journey from Morocco to South Africa. Beginning in Morocco, the route proceeds southwest, passing through countries like Mauritania, Senegal, Ivory Coast, Ghana, Togo, Nigeria, Cameroon, Namibia and ultimately reaching the most southern point in South Africa. This route offers as well, of course, a variety of landscapes, cultural experiences and wildlife encounters throughout its whole length. In 2020, while I was still in the middle of this research, if I could imagine driving through Africa, there was a conflict arising in Ethiopia. The eastern route was blocked by then, by then or not considered traveling. So I looked into the western route. And for a long time, that was my plan. And then over time, I really had struggles to find a car. Time passed, I had to save a shit ton of money to learn about mechanics, things I yeah, thought I have to do or that was also the way I wanted to do. And over time, this whole project of, hey, I do want to work on the road, I do want to make digital excursions out of this project, record videos, share my illustrations. And then over time, you know, the world opens up and Asia came back into my mind and I remembered so many places I still wanted to see. The eastern overlanding route along the former Silk Road offers a journey from Europe to Malaysia, crossing multiple countries and diverse landscapes. Beginning in Europe, the route passes through Turkey, Georgia, Iran, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, China and continues southeast through India. Along the way, notable landmarks include the historic Pamir Highway, the Kanjurib Pass and the Himalayas. This route provides so many different landscapes with its varied natural environments, literally a dream for geographers like me, and ultimately reaches Malaysia as the final destination, 
suddenly I was just like, okay, maybe I will go back to Asia again. Maybe I will drive this route again. Maybe I will see these places again. And for a very long time, that was again my plan. And then I finally found my car in Spain, which I also didn't expect, but I, by that time, already gave up my flat in Vienna and decided to work remotely to kind of gather the pieces of this project together. I published my first YouTube videos and climbed Cringe Mountain on social media. And I still wanted to do this. So I bought my old Land Cruiser, who still is uh, hopefully getting a permit this week, but that's another story, brought it back to Vienna to restore it. In the meantime, and that is another overlanding thing, it took so much time to yeah, find a car and bring it back, restore it, save the money, that of course the world changed around me again and the Asia route hasn't been what it's been in 2018. Overlanding routes in general depend on a lot of things. Main thing, of course, that will come to your mind is conflicts. In this moment, a couple of disclaimers about conflicts and travel advices and so on. If you do a trip like this, you will very likely come across a country that people will tell you, are you completely nuts of going there? Everybody decides on their own terms what is doable, what is not doable, what risks they want to take. But in this case, you're just in this situation, definitely take advice from people who live there, people who recently have been there. Of course, like traveling in news as well, but the details will come from the people who are just like in the area. I postponed the whole thing, the whole decision. I said like, okay, I'm gonna take care of the car and I'm gonna see how I feel and where I'm gonna drive and how the political situation is changed until I'm done. And this time was actually pretty hard. I came back to Vienna, I was quite lost because I basically left my life behind already. It was difficult to find a routine again. Everything with the car was super new to me. I've never done these things before. It took me a while, but one of my problems during this time in the beginning of the year was also that I didn't have this vision anymore. I didn't have the dream. I didn't, you know, lying under the car, scraping rust and dirt and um, going there after, every day after work. I didn't know what for, so I knew I had to make a decision. And while I hit rock bottom with also having COVID for the first time two months ago, I was finally forced to stay at home for a full 10 days and to ask myself the question where I'm actually going with this whole car thing, with this project and with the money I saved. Will I go to Africa and travel the Western route as some friends of mine did and is possible, even though it's hard? Uh, will I go back to Asia even though the circumstances changed a bit and some countries are difficult to access? For example, the borders from Azerbaijan on the land side still are kind of an issue to cross. Um, it was until in the beginning of March not possible to get a visa for overland through China. Pamir Highway is also difficult to cross. There was a lot of countries on the list which had like a little bit of more difficulties than uh, when I traveled the same route in 2018. So in the end, the third big route that I didn't really consider so far came to my mind. The Pan American Highway is considered the longest road in the world. Even though that's not completely true because it's actually two roads, but I'm coming back to that in a moment. If you drive the Pan American Highway, you usually start in Alaska. So in the very north, in the low Arctic actually, if you watch the video about the Arctic, <laughs> I'm gonna make it to another Arctic spot. And then from Alaska, you go down on the western side, cross the US, go down into, into Central America until Panama, where you have to cross the Darien Gap with a ferry. After that, you reach Colombia, so then you're going into South America, where I have never been before, and drive all the way down 
to Argentina, to Ushuaia, which is the official ending point for the Pan American Highway. And after being for 10 days in my flat and reading, I was just like, I have never really been to the Americas. And if I'm already putting so much effort into this whole project and thing, I actually want to explore countries I've never seen before. I mean, I didn't forget about Africa and Asia, to be very honest, but let's see. Subscribe and like this channel to make me more money so I can continue traveling then. Anyway, so yeah, that's the plan. That is the official plan now. I'm bound to the seasons a little bit. I will start in the end of April 2024, crossing North America and Central America until the end of the year and then spending the full year of 2025 in South America before going back. Which way? isn't really clear. Anyway, so yeah, hit me up with travel plans, ideas and project ideas because I will still making videos about geographical topics, about nature topics, about environmental topics. I want to find interesting sites, interesting processes that I want to share with you guys and uh, poof, mosquitoes. So yeah, that's it. The Pan American Highway. If you think that this journey is interesting to you, I'm super happy and you're supporting me if you subscribe. I'm sharing geographical topics. I will share illustrations once I'm on the road. In the meantime, I will share with you what it takes to prepare a trip like this. Leave me in the comments if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer what I can. I'm just looking forward to this trip, shitting my pants at the same time, to be very honest. It's, um, It doesn't happen often, but I think now I'm out of words.